What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 247 of Two Amazon Sellers and a Microphone, brought to you by Solozo. And uh, today, I'm super pumped. We have a great guest and a topic. This is unique. We haven't talked about this strategy, this uh, this way to set up your online FBA business uh, before, uh, but it's I'm, I'm super excited to dive into it because you know me. I love testing out all the every different possible way of selling on Amazon. So we're talking about adding wholesale bundles to your Amazon business. So I'm I'm really curious to dive into this. And joining us, the founder of Mommy Income, Kristen Ostrander. How are you, Kristen? I am fabulous. Thanks for having me on the show. I am glad to have you on. And I knew I was going to like you. And then it was confirmed when we chatted a few <laughs> seconds ago when you said you are a Chiefs fan living in Michigan. I love it. That's you got a lot, I, a lot of respect for me to be a Chiefs fan. So that is a good <laughs> start. <kingdom> all the way. <laughs> I love it. We're going to tailgate at some point in the future. Now that we know each other, it's the best place to tailgate. I can't, I can't wait. But anyway, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I think everyone listening and watching is going to find this fascinating. Um, you know, we talk a lot about private label, all the things you got to do. There's a, there's a lot of work involved, obviously, you know, creating great listings, adding PPC, which we talk about all the time, um, you know, engaging with your customers. There's a lot that goes on, uh, but there's a lot of other models as well. Uh, so we're going to dive into that. But I want to start by giving you the floor for a second to introduce yourself to everybody who doesn't know you, a little bit about your background, how you got into this, love the name Mommy Income. Uh, so I know there's a story behind that. Uh, and then what you're doing right now would be great as well. So take take the awesome. floor. So, uh, well, first of all, there's a total e-com background. Uh, I was married young, high school sweetheart. Actually, my husband was a little bit older. And um, we just kind of out of the gate got married and had um, had some kids. And it was kind of a feast or famine type of situation. My yeah. husband um, is in commercial construction and in Michigan, it's winter half the year. So that always brings some challenges. And so I had to work, but I wanted to make sure I could stay home and raise my kids and things like that. So I took to e-commerce. I started um, selling some things on eBay. A lot of Stuff my kids had kind of outgrown or toys or you know clothes things like that and just kind of got bit by that reseller bug mm -hmm. and so that was 2003 I know that's literally almost 20 years ago uh, I started with eBay and as I grew into that I really realized that I loved it I was a treasure hunter at heart and um, but I wanted to also I was making a decent income but I also balanced that with my family and it was just kind of more of trying to make ends meet rather than really building a business at that time it was just more like a how do you how do you make a hundred bucks to you know put food on the table kind of thing. So um, as I grew and changed, I, I discovered Amazon FBA in 2008. And it was very, you know, bottom ground floor type of thing. Mm -hmm. And it was such an, a, such a different experience than eBay. And so I really enjoyed doing that part because I could ship all of my inventory into Amazon FBA and then not have to deal with directly with customers or people not paying or, you know, that sort of thing. And so I really got into Amazon at that point doing just used books from yard sales. And as I, I started to grow my business, I really realized that um, in order to grow, I was going to need to do some different things. And uh, I was disappointed in wholesale at first when I first, I thought, oh, wholesale is going to be the way, right? And you go into wholesale and you realize the margins are way thinner than you thought. And so as I grew and evolved and changed into that, I, I discovered some different business models. Like you said, tried it all and done it all, um, but started up, started out all that time. It's almost 20 years now of e-commerce. Um, and I, my main, um, focus is of course, wholesale bundles on Amazon FBA. I still dabble in a little bit of eBay because it literally is like my passion. I love to, um, find and treasure hunt and sell things on eBay as well, but that's definitely my main, my main focus there. So we have three kids, two of them, which are, are, um, adults now 21, 19, and my youngest one is almost 12. And, um, so far that's our story. Yeah. I live in Michigan and I'm a huge chiefs fan because my dad was a football fan, but the lions are terrible. So I had to pick someone else. And when I was 10, I liked red and white. So I picked the chiefs. <laughs> you made the right pick. No, doubt I did. It. After that's all me. these years, it's finally paying off. <laughs> yeah. You made the right pick. Yeah. You will along with the journey with me as well. They weren't great for a while, but it's the, it's paying off now. That's yeah, a fun absolutely. time. Um, so then you launched Mommy Income. Mm -hmm. Talk about that journey, uh, so why you wanted to do that, and just what it's like seeing people that you're working with and coaching having success. It's got to be a lot of fun. 
so I snagged the domain back in, it was probably like 2010, I think. And, and I snagged the domain. I had no idea what I was going to do with it, but I remember saying to my kids or they would see me, you know, processing my inventory from, you know, my little office or whatever. And they're like, what are you, what are you doing, mom? What are, what are all these books? What are all these things? And I'm like, oh, this is just mommy's income. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to make us a little bit of money so we can do fun things, you know? And the kids were like, oh, that's fun. And it just kind of stuck with me. So I snagged the domain and it wasn't for four years year, five years later that I did anything with it um, in 2014, after I appeared on a live show with someone asking me about um, my Amazon success and things like that. I was just in Facebook groups and someone's like, hey, we've got this live show. We'd love to interview you and talk about your, your Amazon success. And um, I jumped on the show and realized that I had a lot to share and I didn't realize I had a lot to share and I loved it. And they kept asking me to come back. And someone said, why don't you do your own show? You have so much to share and so much to teach and we want more. And so I followed my intuition with that. And I thought, I really love doing this and people are asking for more. So I started my own show and I did a live uh, mommy income show for many, many years and then converted it to a podcast and kind of been doing it ever since. And mommy income is just my way. It was just me. It's not just for moms. It's I was the mom making it some income on the side and right. realized it could turn into um, what is now a seven figure business. And so um, I just, I learned that I love to teach and I started putting some of my knowledge on paper and in courses and mommy income is um, what it is today because of that. That's awesome. And you've got courses and you're helping people and there's a lot of great testimonials on your website. And that's got to feel great to, to see other people taking what you've learned and you know, you're impacting their lives in a really beneficial way. You know, it really is my heart's passion to see people succeed. I know everyone has more potential in them than they can tap into themselves. And so having a coach or a mentor is really helpful to help pull out the potential of people that are already there and to see people quitting their jobs and doing things and, and owning their own income and their own freedom is 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 just my life's work. That's what I love doing. I love to see other people succeeding and reaching the top of their potential. And if I can have a hand in that, um, it's it's just my life's work. I love it. I love it too. That's, that's fantastic. And your story, there's a lot to unpack there um, because flipping, that's how I got into e-commerce. Um, you know, I tell everybody this, but I was a tennis pro for a long time, teaching lessons, had time off, you know, lots of time during the day and just started flipping. And that, when you make those sales and you're like, I just made 20 bucks, I just made 30 bucks. All I did was flip this product that gets addictive real quick. And then you, and then when you start learning, you can scale, whether you go in, because I remember when I transitioned to private label and I bought my first order and then you realize, oh, Amazon FBA does all the work. I'm like, I'm not packing, shipping anything anymore. I can sell hundreds of units a day. I'm like, what is going on? I mean, it's just refreshing that app and you're like, oh my gosh, this is a real business. It's a game changer when you use FBA. I mean, my transition from eBay over to FBA and having them handle basically all the back end, all I had to do was process some inventory. And that was step one for many, many years. We did all of our inventory in-house. Um, we use our garage, we use an extra room. And the biggest freeing moment in my business, I guess, would be when I hired a prep facility. Because with mm -hmm. wholesale bundles, there's a lot. We get things from different suppliers and they put them together and put them into kits. If you think about subscription type boxes or a gift box of some sort. That's kind of what we do as wholesale bundles. And so the prep center receives all that, processes it all, bundles it for us, sends it all to FBA. So literally I could be sitting here with you. I could be in Florida. I could be in Thailand if I wanted. And my business is still hands off and running smoothly because we are completely remote. So that is kind of the scale that has happened. And once you realize you can scale an e-commerce business, I feel like the sky is really the limit. Absolutely. And another topic I want to touch on is you've got kids, they've grown up watching you do this. How has that impacted them? I, I have two teenage boys now. They're helping me with a lot of the stuff I do. Sometimes they love it. Sometimes they hate it. <laughs> um, <laughs> the struggle is real. <laughs> yeah, the struggle is real. But I, I feel like it's a gift to teach a kid that they can do things on their own. They can create a business. I'm curious how that that is for you. Absolutely. You know what? It's so important, I think, for our children to see us 
living the life that we intend to live and with living with intention and following all of our dreams um, as much as, you know, they're, they're, they're watching and they're listening, even if they don't care. Now, my, my kids are not necessarily interested right now in e-commerce. My son's a musician. And so he's pursuing his career in music and um, that's great for him. And my, my daughter's very, ind- my other daughter's very independent and wants to do all of her own things, but they have grown and watched and helped and seen that hard work does pay off at one point. I mean, part of the story that we we have that you know I cover it in my book is um, we uh, in 2010 when my uh, week after my third child was born my husband was injured at work and mm. he was unable to with with PT and recovery and surgeries and all that stuff he was unable to go back to his job and we weren't they they didn't give us workman's comp like most people think oh you get hurt at work you get workman's comp you sit down and eat some you know eat Cheetos and watch TV till you recover that is absolutely not the case they actually said that his injury was degenerative and they didn't want to give us any money for that so in the process of fighting that and trying to get him well I had this tiny little business but it wasn't enough to keep our family afloat we lost our home to foreclosure and lost everything we had back in 2012 uh, and so we had to start over and had to rebuild and once he was on the mend and we he helped he was literally i called him the one arm bandit he had the baby in one arm the, the bum arm and he was like one finger typing helping me do listings and images and pictures and stuff like that and we just kind of picked up the pieces and and moved along and i think as my children my older children are watching and growing they see we just kept telling them anything is possible with hard work and dedication and just just getting it done, following your dreams. It is really possible to have anything that you want, but you have to work for it and you have to be willing to make sacrifices. And as they see and grow that, and I see my son chasing his dreams of, of music and he's very gifted and talented, but he also realizes you got to pay your dues and put the work in. And so I think as our kids are watching that, whether they end up in entrepreneurship or not, they're seeing us live out our dreams and taking actions and proving to them that it's possible. So um, I think that's really good that your boys also are watching and learning and seeing that you know the things are possible for them too. Yeah, and I think to to your story, um, you know, it's not all rosy. It's there's there's things that happen in life. There's you know injuries. There's you know you could lose a job. You can do anything. But how how you're you're able to pivot, put your head down, get to work, find a solution. Those are invaluable to have kids see. Um, and sounds like they're taking that under their wing right now and pursuing what they want. That's, that's really great. Um, I love that story and talk about your book. Cause I want you, you mentioned your book, so it's gotta be a, a great read uh, where, what, what does it cover? Obviously your story, but then where can people find it? This is like well? my author's copy here. It's called Dream Big, Step Small. And um, it is, it's learn how to bust through the overwhelm and just take action that as small steps are still steps and you can get anything you want if you just take action every single day towards that. Filling the gap between where you really want to be and where you are right now, because if we're all you know, honest, we know there's a gap between there. And so what do we need to do today to close that gap? And it just may, might one step, it might be a huge leap mm-hmm. sometimes, but other times it's just a few small steps. So it's not really an Amazon how to guide. It's, it, and it's not a memoir. It's really about action steps. And if you want to, if you have a dream, you can step small towards that dream, no matter where you are in life. I mean, we, we crawled out of foreclosure and $50,000 of debt and all of that stuff, you know, brick by brick, you can do it. Um, if you're dedicated to your own dreams. And so it's the, you can find it on Amazon. It's also on Audible uh, on my website. But um, dream big, step small. Um, that was that wasn't intentional to to plug that or anything. It's just like part of of my story. So absolutely. Well, I wanted to because I want people to read it. Um, you know, wherever they are in their lives, that can be uh, invaluable to mm-hmm. to read that and get encouragement from it. Quick question on that book. Did you self-publish that through KDP? I did indeed. Speaking of yeah. Amazon, yes. self-publishing on Amazon. I, I think it's absolutely an amazing platform that anyone can share a part of them, whether they're writing children's books or memoirs or even creating planners that uh, Amazon KDP is also another way to make um, you know, passive income and putting your thoughts out there into the world. And maybe you can impact someone's life and help them even with your story. I feel like everyone has a story inside of them. Then people should hear them. Um, because it can impact your life in some sort of way. So um, yeah, KDP was definitely the way to go um, for that. And um, that was a great experience. Oh, yeah. And all of your knowledge on Amazon previously, for sure, helped publish that book, list it. Because my I know this because my wife is a, a children's author and illustrator. She's an artist. Mm-hmm. And 
she's published three books through KDP. Um, and it's amazing. It's the same feeling. And anybody who's listening, this is another great opportunity. This is, and we're going to talk about wholesale bundling here in a mm -hmm. second, but KDP is an amazing, it's amazing. It's the same thing The it's really difficult in traditional publishing to have an agent, find someone to publish your book. KDP, yeah. amazing. You can do it yourself. No inventory again. Mm -hmm. No fulfillment. And royalties, no returns. No, you publish a book if people buy. You know, there's definitely marketing involved. I mean, don't sure. don't hear us that what we're not saying. It's not going to be a set it and forget it thing. But no. if you have marketing, if you have something out there, and you have a place to um, show forth what is happening there, and you're in your anything else, you can market it wherever you want. And because of social media, it makes it so much easier. So once you publish and have a book out there. Um, you know, it's up to you to put it out there, but yeah, it's great. I mean, you can publish a book that's 24 pages or 250 pages or full color, or just even, I know um, some ladies in business right now who are making uh, um, planners and uh, checklist mm -hmm. type books and things like that, or recipe books and, um, you know, things to put, you know, fill in the blanks even. I just love, yeah. I just love the the creativity fact of KDP. There's so much, so many different ways to make money online these days. I mean, we could go on and on about oh, all yeah. the different ways. It's so fun. It's a great time we live in. There's opportunity everywhere, for sure. For anybody who can hustle and, and get things done, there's a lot of opportunity. Okay, let's talk about what we came here to talk about. <laughs> Wholesale bundles. I'm really fascinated by this. A um, couple things, um, obviously, for anybody listening, wholesales, where you're buying you know, traditional brands or brands that are out there that are not usually selling themselves on Amazon, and you can... Uh, create a contract with them and deal with them and then sell their goods um, for markup. The, the, the struggle with wholesale is it's a traditional wholesale. It's a volume game, low margins. Mm -hmm. Competition can come in and out from anywhere. You've got MSRP mm -hmm. you got to deal with sometimes. Um, you're buying the inventory up front. You know, there's a lot. Um, but you've created an interesting niche in here. And I I'm really excited to dive into it. So talk what is wholesale bundling oh i love this question okay wholesale bundling is putting products together that are highly complementary in the same package from wholesale sources and or your private label brand to create value um, for your customer. So a great example of a wholesale bundle would be like a gift set. So I, I say I, I have a private label brand of wine glasses and, mm -hmm. you know, say they're mommy income, whatever there is, mommy income wine glasses. Well, alone, that's my private label brand, or it could say, you know, mommy loves wine, whatever it is. You have these great wine glasses and you're making some sales on your, your maybe your, your private label, you know, making some sales or whatever. But if you want to use that same product and you want to make more sales and create additional value for that, you create a gift set. So you have your, your, your wine glass, your mommy wine glass, and you say, okay, let's put a, a scented candle and a pair of socks and just have a little nice little gift set for maybe Mother's Day or Mom's gift set. So now you have your private label item and then you source the other things from wholesale suppliers. You know, no need to reinvent the, reinvent the wheel here and some nice packaging. And now you can sell your, your glasses individually, but now you also have this value added gift set to where your wine glasses might run $12 or so, but a gift set's gonna be more like 50. So it's a way to increase not only the visibility of your own brand, say you have your private label item, or simply putting wholesale bundles together, not even your own. I have products that are not even my own. And I create these, these gift sets where people say it's, you know, Father's Day gifts or teacher gifts or anything like that. It doesn't even have to be gifts. Another example of a wholesale bundle would be, um, you know, a new puppy starter kit. So somebody just gets a new puppy. They've never had a dog before and they need all these products, dog bowls and, and, you know, leashes and all these things. So putting together a kit that makes sense for the customer. So number one, it's, uh, it's convenience and speed and variety for your Amazon customers specifically. Amazon customers are not like eBay customers. They're not like other customers. They want fast. They want two day free shipping. They want it at their door immediately. They don't want to go to the store and they're willing to pay a little bit of a premium to shop less. And that's what Amazon does for customers. And when you put all of your items together in a bundle, it really creates value for the customer and more bottom line for you. So that in a sense is a wholesale bundle and the sky is the limit only by your creativity. So as much as you can create, that's as many bundles as you could create. I love it. And, and it's, it's really, it's genius. And it's something that I've seen before. Um, and it's something I've contemplated testing. So I've got lots of private label products that I have. Um, you know, I was looking to 
you know, virtual bundles came out a little while ago where you can virtually bundle uh, your complimentary products. Uh, we can talk a little bit about that if that's something that you're doing as well. Um, <clears throat> but the ability to create more, basically more ASINs using your same product, more visibility, um, you know, a better fit for the customer. If, the, like you said, complimentary products, uh, and you can upsell that. I mean, people will pay a premium to have it all come together. Uh, gift baskets, like you said, it's amazing because you can hit every holiday, birthdays, mm -hmm. every single thing. There could be a lot of evergreen products in there as well. Um, it, it's fascinating. I want to dig in a little bit because the benefit of this, in my mind, wholesale, you're competing for the buy box with lots of sellers. So when you bundle them, you're essentially creating your own ASIN. That we call this poor man's private label. Okay. So when I say poor man's private label, it's because back in the day when I created the wholesale bundles and I was really starting to put all these things together, the reason I did it is because I checked into private label at that time. And now this was about 24. 2014, 2015, when I really started digging into all these different ways, because I had been just a retail arbitrage person for many years. And that was great. But I was kind of stuck in the retail arbitrage prison. I was like going, I was, I was making a lot of money, but I was also spending a ton of time and energy doing that. And I thought this isn't the life I want. I am making decent money, but I can't spend any of it because all I'm doing is working 60, 70 hours a week with retail arbitrage. Mm -hmm. So that's when I kind of transitioned into wholesale, found the thin margins, found a lot of competition. I thought, what's going to be next? So I checked into private label, it's supposed to be, you know, the holy grail, the top of the food chain and Amazon, create your own brand and all this stuff. And I followed the sunshines and rainbows of all that and realized I didn't have $15,000 to start. And I know rewinding many years ago, things were a little bit more challenging um, to import and to create things and all that kind of stuff. And I realized I was going to tie that money up for six to 12 months. And I couldn't do that in my business. I needed cash now. And so I thought, how was I going to do this? And so I realized that bundling had the same benefits of private label, except for I didn't have to create and, and have 10,000 ordered and import them all from China and get a storage unit or a warehouse that I literally could order from wholesale suppliers and curate my own kits and my own bundles, put them together, create a new ASIN. So now I have no competition. I have my own bundle brand as well. So that like, I joke that Kristen's favorite things is my bundle brand. So I have my own brand. I have a registered trademark. I have brand registry so that all my bundles come in under Kristen's favorite things, but I'm using uh, products that are already being created from other places. So I skip the middleman as far as, uh, I skip the, the private label part where I have to produce, manufacture, be responsible for all of those things. I order from wholesale suppliers, send them to the warehouse, they bundle and kit and send it off. And so I really feel like I eliminated the, the lead times, the extra expenses of doing private label, yet I have all the benefits of my own ASIN, my brand store, my brand registry, everything. So um, it's kind of the best of both worlds. Sure. And your risk is reduced. I mean, Absolutely. if a private label product fails, you're in... <laughs> You You're have a garage full of paperweights, right? <laughs> you have a garage full. Um, well, you have a lot of options if a bundle doesn't work. Number one, you probably didn't you, did, you didn't have massive order quantities to begin with. Right. And you can a lot lower minimum order quantities when you're talking about wholesale. Some of the suppliers I work with, their their minimum order is a couple hundred dollars. So sure. you're not you're not taking a huge risk of putting everything into all your eggs in one basket. I have at any given time, I have 150 to 200 different bundles that we have out there, seasonal and evergreen. And there's not any single one product that's dominating all of my sales, which also makes your business a lot more sellable when you're ready to exit. Is that, is that on your roadmap? Absolutely. <laughs> um, nice. I like to, I mean, you, you need, everyone needs to build a business with an exit in mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we're gone are the days where somebody gets a job or starts a business and they stay there for 40 years and they check out with their 401k and retire and live happily ever after. I mean, people are changing, uh, ever growing and changing and passions are changing and, you know, lives change for whatever reason. So starting with the end in mind or building your business, knowing that at some point you're either going to pass the torch or sell or exit is really important important to set your strategies up ahead of time so that you could do that. And um, I know that diversification and product is something that really, um, it, it, it's safe for a lot of investors to or, or per, people that are going to buy your business. Um, they like to see diversification. If all of the sales are from one brand or one product, they're like, oh, what happens to that one product? The whole ship sinks. So, you know, kind of keeps the balance there when you've got more, more items to offer.
Absolutely. And there's another benefit is you're, a lot of these products are probably recognizable brand names that you're selling. So you probably, well, is that to true? Be honest, well, to be honest, um, there's a myth when it comes to that. Like a lot mm -hmm. of people think, oh my gosh, in order to make money on Amazon or to make money at all, you know, you have to use top name brands, fast sellers, things like that. Honest mm -hmm. to goodness. Um, we don't sell more than a couple hundred of any of our units on any given month. So when we're looking at our diversification, we have so much diversification that, you know, most of our units we're selling a hundred or less a month of yet we're launching and being to the top and we're, we're being seen because I, my strategy that I teach is to go after boring, unsexy things that people buy every day, but we don't talk about. We talk about Air Jordans. We talk about, mm -hmm. you know, Apple iWatches, you know, all these types, types of things, but no one's talking about the HDMI cord that they need or the tarp that they need to cover their their, their patio or, you know, your, your grill covers and things like that. Things that people buy all the time that don't have brand names, they just have function. And so Amazon customers really aren't necessarily shopping, you know, when shopping by brand for certain things, apparel, makeup, health and beauty, a lot of those are very brand centric, but look around you. How many things can you name in your, in the room you're sitting in right now that have major brand names? A few, but mm -hmm. for the most part, it's like, oh, it's just a water bottle. It's just a speaker. It's just a, you know, a stack of paper. So, you know, selling unsexy, boring things makes money because you don't have to be focused on brand. You're not worried about compliance issues when it comes to things like that. Just bundling together items that make sense and bring value to the customer don't have to be brand centric. I love it. That's a great tip. And you're exactly right. Um, I want to talk about the process. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Where where's your starting point? Do you try to figure out a, a bundle that you would like to put together and then start reaching out to suppliers, um, wholesalers to to find those products? Or are you taking the products that you're currently selling and figuring out ways to create new bundles? And what other, what else do those suppliers offer? I'm sure it's a, a combination, but w somebody who's starting right now and they're looking to get into this, what would you recommend that they do? And, well, and I have I have a whole twelve step um, process. <laughs> no, no pun intended there with the twelve yeah. steps. <laughs> yeah, um, it's a it's a twelve step framework that I take people through to start with the research process. And one of the steps in the be very beginning is either if you're already a seller, if you already have a private label product, or you already have products that are kind of best sellers for you, you look at those items and you go through this process that I have with the knowledge bank or the related words and start looking, um, doing the research using either Helium Ten or or, or Merchant Words is another one of my favorites, or some keyword research and start looking at other products that are related, that go with it, that are complementary together. So say I see some tennis rackets behind you there. Mm -hmm. so, it, so if you were going to create, a, say your best seller is one of those tennis rackets, you're like, wow, I'm knocking it out of the park with this. So say, well, there are people that start in tennis that are beginners, right? What do they need? What kind of products do they need to put together to say, hey, a 10-year-old is going to start playing tennis this, this spring or summer or whatever. And what are they going to need to start out? So you could create a tennis racket, you know, ten, a beginner tennis kit. And it could mm -hmm. be the right size racket with, you know, some tennis balls and some other, you know, maybe sweatbands or something like some other gear or something that you need, even a carry bag to say, hey, this is an all-in-one beginner tennis kit. And so if you already have a bestseller, building a bundle around that to include your bestseller and also complementary products. Because if we really dig down and just take five minutes to think about it, especially if you're passionate about something, um, then you can actually list tons of different products and things that make your sport or your hobby or this, you know, even if it's computer programming and there's got to be products around mm -hmm. those items. And if you just take some time to brainstorm and write down the complementary products, you can easily create a bundle from what you already have. And then once you have that, say you have your tennis ragged as your flagship and you're going to create this kit, then you're looking for the suppliers that have those other things and you're, you're going to put them together in a package and send them to Amazon. Now we have our, our beginner, you know, tennis beginner set where you've got everything that you need to get started and, and get started with the sport. So that's kind of in a nutshell, how you do that. Yeah. And, and what a, an attractive product that would be for somebody who's giving a gift, a birthday gift, uh, back to school gift, anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's the whole kit. I mean, you can see why that would be a, a really popular product um, and, and be well searched and, and have very low competition. 
Absolutely. And honest to goodness, like there's a lot of people that like if we go to the store, for example, and we're shopping even at the grocery store and we see something that's like buy one, get one free or you have this single shampoo over here. But then the shampoo and conditioner comes over here together. We automatically think as psychology teaches us automatically think we're getting more when something is in a package, when it's in a mm -hmm. kit, when it comes with more than one item. So the tennis racket alone might be a great value. Value. But if you have a tennis racket with several other things and it's all in this one kit and it's a higher price, but people also see, but I get all of this stuff versus the single item. Most people choose all of this stuff, even if it costs a few, you know, a premium because mm -hmm. they know I'm just, I'm getting more for my money. And that perceived value of the customer when they see multiple items being offered, even if it's a gift set, um, the perceived value automatically goes up when they see that and they're more intentionally buying the kit rather than the single unit item. Absolutely. And I just went through this process with my son. He was building, he wanted to build his own computer. And I mean, he did so much research and he's buying this component from over here, this component from over here. He really put a lot of work into it. And I was thinking, man, there's got to be somebody out there who's bundling a kit together. Exactly. Uh, which there are. There's some smart people that have this out there. I was like, that's, that's where I kind of got my eyes open to. Man, a, a bundle would be, uh, just a great venture, a great way to go with this. So let's talk about how do you find and contact suppliers for these products? So it depends on how you're doing it. it. It depends on what you're looking for. And if you're starting with an idea versus starting with a catalog. So if I, if, if you're brand new and you've never really done wholesale or you have your private label product and you're kind of looking for something, I suggest that people visit trade shows or trade show websites. And I, I call it's called trade show stocking. If you go to mommyincome.com forward slash 100, you can watch this free small video of literally how you stock hundreds of suppliers and you can start reaching out to them immediately. Immediately. Um, and the thing is, is that I, I, if people don't have, like, say you're starting with the tennis racket, but if you're not and you're saying, I want to do bundles and I don't have anything, I suggest you go to a trade show and get several catalogs and get some context, see what's out there and look at what they have and then look at other items. Because in most of the time with your wholesalers, they offer complimentary products already. Mm -hmm. So they have sections in their catalog and you can look and say, oh, here's the sporting section. Here's this, here's that. And you can start looking at what kind, they, they put complimentary things right on the page for you. Mm -hmm. So people are selling individual SKUs and that's great. But when you start combining them, like my most recent, uh, um, my most recent bundle I created is actually a home decor bundle that is a beach theme because we we visit the beach often. We love, um, you know, Michigan is very terrible in the winter. So we love beaches and we can't have a beach theme decor here but when we go to florida we often see that every airbnb and every place and every shop has like all this beach theme stuff so i thought hey maybe there's something to this and so i started looking up some decor and, and found a supplier and realized that like they basically make bundles for you on the page all you have to do is order them together build the listing and put them in the same box because people who are buying you know the the shell decor set or, or the, the decorative signs and things they're buying those in groups already and amazon gives us a little bit of a hint of this it's the frequently bought together or the people who bought this also bought this now that's not foolproof sometimes you see people who bought cereal also bought toilet paper also bought a tarp so we know that it, those don't always go together but there's definitely some hints in there to say people who bought this decorative shell holder also bought this um you know sign that says my the beach is my happy place and so it kind of naturally flows together to put those there. And now a happy customer can pull your bundle off of Amazon and say, oh, this wall is already decorated for me. Add to cart. You've saved them time and they're so happy about it. So I really, really suggest that people get creative by getting access to some of the products and going to trade shows and or their websites is all completely free. Opening wholesale accounts to get catalogs is completely free. Now, if you have a product already and you're looking for suppliers of that, you know, you can use something like, I, I like AMZ Scout for some of this, but a general Google search of, mm -hmm. you know, tennis, tennis balls wholesale or tennis balls bulk. And you sort through the ones that you can tell are middlemen. And if it says, become a dealer, become a seller, become a reseller, become um, 
a distributor, then you fill out those items on there and you just open accounts. I mean, it's they do that all the time. So do you. It's not hard to get wholesale accounts. It's just you just have to do a few minutes of digging. Even my 10 year old can find a mm -hmm. wholesale supplier. And also the other way that I teach is if you find a product, say, in a store. Here's an example. If you find a product in the store. These are the best pens on the planet. Just so you know, everyone should be writing with G2 pens. Um, but anyway, this is just an example here. If you flip over any retail package, you're going to see a barcode and some information right there. This says um, Pilot Corporation of America, Jacksonville, Florida, pilotpen.com. It also says distributed and sales by uh, retail and commerce in the U.S. So if you flip over the package, nine times out of 10, you can find the actual wholesale, the actual distributor and manufacturer, uh, reach out to them directly, open an account. It's really not difficult. And most of the time, if you tell them, I'm not selling. We get the no Amazon sellers a lot, right? Like, oh, we have plenty of Amazon sellers. No Amazon, no Amazon. But we present things differently at bundles. We say, guess what? I'm not going to I'm not going to compete directly with you with these pens and sell them wholesale. I'm actually going to put them in a back to school supply kit for middle schoolers. And I'm not going to be direct competition. I do bundles only. I will sign a contract that says so. And then they usually say, yeah, sure, you can sell them in bundles. You just can't compete directly with us or with our other Amazon distributors and everybody wins. So that's another way to approach your wholesalers. If they say no to Amazon, they usually say yes to bundling. Interesting. Cause I was going to ask that I've run into that multiple times where they're not bringing on more Amazon sellers or they're just, they're, they're doing it themselves. So it sounds like they're receptive to that idea when you bring that up. I mean, why wouldn't they be Yeah, <laughs> way to sell more product without competing against themselves. Mm -hmm. What, okay, now you've got your, your, your bundle in mind, you've contacted wholesalers, you've arranged deals. W at what point do you recommend people move to a prep center versus doing it themselves? Should they do it right from the beginning or should they learn that process and then try to find a prep center? What, because the prep center is the key. That's how you get to, that's how you scale whenever yeah. you want. Uh, at what point do you recommend that? Well, to be completely honest, I, it's, it's difficult because some people get into this business for that reason. They live in a, you know, one bedroom apartment in New York city. They cannot literally have a whole, you know, pallets right. dropped off at their house. So depending on your situation, I really encourage people to get their hands dirty in the beginning and know exactly where their products are coming from, how they're packaged, how they come in, and at least see some of that process before handing it off to the prep facilities. So doing it at a smaller scale first, just so that you as the owner are aware of the processes, how you want your items packaged and things like that. So I did my own wholesale bundling, receiving pallets at my home, things like that for many years before I handed it off. Um, but honestly, not, a, not everybody can can start like that. My my suggestion is if you want to be hands off, you need to have excellent communication with your prep center. My prep center is my favorite. They actually built their prep center with bundles. Like we, we built I didn't build the prep center, but they begged me to help them with the bundling so that they could provide bundling for Amazon sellers who were doing that because there was no other prep center out there that was doing bundling in a way that was profitable. Um, and so, and profitable for, for me to be able to pay them to do that. And so um, they very carefully and uh, we send them our custom packaging. They package all of our stuff in our custom packaging and send it off to Amazon. And so I would really encourage everyone at first, at least the first go round of your bundles to bundle them yourselves, figure it out, figure out how you want it all laid out. And then you're able to tell the prep center and community communicate with them exactly how you want it done so that you can protect your, your products. Okay. That brings up a whole nother question. Cause that, this is interesting to me. I, I'm, I'm curious to hear the answer packaging. Um, so a lot of these, it sounds like if it's a gift basket uh, or something like that, I mean, you, a, a basket is another thing that you have to source mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe like straw or whatever goes in there. Uh, if it's like a, a makeup bundle or something like that, or mother's day gift. It's, it's nice to have all that in there. So you're having to source all of that as well. Um, some things might be in boxes that have your logo and your design on it and describe the product. You can also just poly bag them together. Absolutely. <laughs> you can put them in a bag. How important 
is the quality of the packaging or the design work um, if you're going to go down this, this model? Honestly, I think customer experience is really important and it depends on the products that you're offering on which customer experience you want them to have. So for example, I sell a couple of, of decorative um, kitchen towels that are theme, rooster themed mm -hmm. and I would put those in my mommy income. You know, this is just a regular poly bag with my branding on it and I would just send that in something like this. Obviously, it doesn't need extra protection, things like that. But when you're talking gift sets, I'm going to give you another example here. Um, when you're talking gift sets, this is a subscription box. So I'm not quite at this level when I do my, my boxing. But if you're doing something like a subscription box, this is all over printing. This is going to cost a lot more. But it has a different customer experience, including when you open it and it's got some things printed, like when if you have printing on the inside of the box as well. So it depends on what you're protecting is what type of packaging. And it depends, I think, on how you want to build your brand. My my advice to my particular wholesale bundle students is most of my students are not building a brand that they expect to be a household name in Target and something like that. So I mean, Kristen's favorite things bundle is really just a way for me to benefit and my customers to benefit. But I don't plan on having a, a, a nationwide name brand. I create a service. My service is these gift boxes or you know things like that that I'm putting together. So it really depends on what kind of branding and and how, what brand you're building and whether or not you're, if you have a specific brand, then you want to make sure that your customer experience from the very beginning is a wow factor. And so, mm -hmm. yes, you have to source all those pr products and, and packaging. But if you're really just kind of bundling some wholesale items together, making it a little, you know, it's your business and you're, you know, you're not interested in creating a big brand, then the branding can be minimal. I just think that it needs to be professionally. It has to be permanently affixed. So no, you know, stamps, no real big stickers or anything like that, unless it's very professionally produced. And now I even, my pack, my bags that I just got, I get those from Sticker Mule. They come in less than a week and they're professionally, they're very thick. They're professionally produced. They look great. They have a great logo. And it's just something that that can be produced very quickly. Uh, uh, boxes are going to be a little bit more expensive, but again, your product is that you're, you're protecting. So the ones with the wine glasses and the mom gift sets, those are going to be like, I, I'd like to do black because it just, mm. it doesn't show as much dirt. It seems very elegant and you can put just one particular color on there that there's your logo and have it go with that. It doesn't have to be expensive, but I think it's important so that people will come back. A lot of people think on Amazon, people won't come back and buy the same things and they never see you again. And it's kind of like this big mess of, of you can't go to a specific brand store, but Amazon's changed that and so people will come back if they have a really good customer experience it doesn't have to cost a lot but it's worth the investment absolutely and i love those examples i love that you have examples right there that's great <laughs> uh, i get that question a lot so yeah. I, use, I try to have some things uh, on hand I, i'm very visual so i like to show like okay this is example of like top notch and here's what you can kind of get away with when your budget's lower you know right <laughs> but i can see it like for your the the kitchen um towel hand towel set you were talking about mm -hmm. even though that that that's a fairly simple poly bag but it's really nice it's got your logo on it i mean that just that looks premium that mm -hmm. looks really nice when you get it and it got me thinking about the tennis set you're talking about that would be much simpler i mean you could put everything in the tennis bag <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, and that's another cool. thing about packaging is that if you have something that can fit inside something, you know, your wholesale products might come in a box or in a bag itself. Now, if you can fit your bundled items inside yes. of those boxes, then you're saving money all around. And another way to do branding or packaging uh, that, that still can be professional looking is if you have something smaller, you can print something like a postcard like this. It's do not, this is not for Amazon. So yeah. like folks that are watching, <laughs> do not use QR codes. Don't put yeah. your website stuff on there, but it can say, thank you from Kristen's favorite things, or thank you from mommy income for this purchase. It's something that's branded, which will protect you from hijackers. Because even if you have brand registry, people sometimes still want to yeah. jump on and, and ride your coattails. But if they don't have your branded items, you can boot them in a second. So having something that just is professional, these are like 20 cents, but right. it's something that looks professional. It looks like I took time and energy to let you know as the customer that I care about you and your experience, even if it was a clear poly bag with an insert card. It's something, this is my private label brand, by the way. So, so something else I put those in um, when I send those, but those are, those are also other ways that you can 
inexpensively contribute to um, the quality of your products. Yeah, I love your passion also about all this. You you get very excited. I love <laughs> it. You, I mean, you you can just tell that you're enjoying what you're doing, and I know that all of your your students that are that are working with you, they've got to thrive off of that. I know everyone that's listening, their their mind has probably been opened up a little bit here. They're like, this is interest. This is something I can do. Um, you know, e commerce is e commerce is full of opportunity. It's really fun. There's challenges. I mean, there's people, I talk to people every day. They've been burned. They launched mm -hmm. a private label product in too competitive a niche. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a price war going on. They're doing wholesale and their their margins are slipping or they're not mm -hmm. winning the buy box enough and they're liquidating products. Um, for for anyone who's in those situations, look, here here's an opportunity. Here, you take all those skills you learned. You, anybody who's out there that's ever dabbled in e-commerce has a skill set that they don't realize the value of, I feel like. Absolutely. Uh, you, you touched on that earlier. It's like people started talking to you. You're like, wait, I have this much information to give out. And it's true. Um, this is a this is an opportunity. I mean, this is something that people can try out. It's at not a huge, not a huge upfront cost to try to test something out like this. The Really great conversation, Kristen. I'm so glad that you joined us uh, today. I know everyone found a ton of value in this uh, and is great. So I really, really appreciate that. Now, I do want to give you a chance to tell because I know people are going to try to find you, try to reach out. They want to contact you. They want to start uh, working with you. What are the best steps for people to start seeing your content or maybe take one of your courses or start working with your coaching? All right. So there are three things first. Number one, subscribe to the Amazon Files podcast. We're at everywhere you can get your podcast, the Amazon Files. We do shows every single week. We have interviews and solo shows. There's It's just full. There's archives full of all kinds of information there. So subscribe to the podcast. Then I am at Mommy Income on all socials. So make sure you're following Mommy Income there. And then MommyIncome.com. We have a lot of free resources on our page. Your roadmap to your first bundle will be there. You can check that out and download that um, free guide there. It kind of shows you, hey, if you're already in the Amazon game, this is how this is your roadmap to your first bundle there. And of course, um, you can reach me anytime at mommyincome.com. And I'm happy to answer any questions that people have. I will make sure all those links are in the uh, show notes and the description on our socials so everyone can can get quick access to that. Your website's awesome. I'm looking at it right now. Mm -hmm. And I didn't scroll down far enough the first time I looked at this to see your entire family in chiefs gear which <laughs> yeah you definitely would have noticed that amazing i absolutely love that uh and i see all these free guides so everyone please go check that out um you never know it could be the start of a great journey uh it's it's and it's and it's a ton of fun and you can work with Kristen. look how much fun it would be she's great <laughs> never a dull moment <laughs> All right, Kristen, thanks so much uh, for joining us. Uh, I hope everyone checks you out, uh, your website and everything else. And great conversation. I would love to get you back on sometime in the future. Uh, there's things change all the time in this space. You, I, you're, you're very, you're very crafty. So I know you're going to come up with some new tactics and some new strategies uh, down the road. So I will definitely get you back on here to talk all about that. Uh, but again, thanks for joining us, and thanks everyone for tuning in. If you like content like this, make sure you subscribe to this podcast as well as Kristen's podcast. Uh, and uh, also you can see all these live streams uh, on Solozo's social media platforms. So Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, all of our past episodes with great guests like Kristen are all there. Go check them out. We talk about every topic in uh, the e-commerce space on here. So make sure you subscribe to those. Um, give us a shout out, give us a review, let us know how we're doing. Additionally, if you're selling on Amazon right now, Kristen, we didn't even get, jump into advertising. I don't know if that's something you do, but we'll, we can talk about that on the, on the next one. But if you are advertising on Amazon and it's a pain point for you, it's a lot of work, or you don't really understand the strategies that you want to roll out to help meet your goals, we can help you here at Solozo. So you can go to solozo.com and book a demo, you'll get to talk with me. We can talk about anything Amazon. I'll also show you the power of Solozo's platform and our team for managing your advertising. So check us out, solozo.com. All right, everybody, that is it for today. Kristen, thanks for joining us and thanks everybody for tuning in. We will see everybody.